Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to show you my process for sodding two small spaces that I have in my yard. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. I used a company called SuperSod, which is a North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia company to get my sod. They also have a company called Soil Cube, uh, where they can deliver bags of compost at the same time. And so I got a bag of compost from them as well. So that was super convenient. Whoever you get your sod from could tell you the best type of turf to use. I'm using Zeon Zoysia, and the reason I picked it, uh, number one, it's a warm season grass. I'm, I'm in the south. I've got very long, hot summers. My front yard space is full sun all day. Absolutely cooks out there and uh, definitely needs a warm season grass. Best you would definitely burn out out there. The backyard's a little more tricky. It gets a lot of sun. It's super hot back here, same as the front, but it does get a little shade cast on it by early afternoon and uh, so I went with Zeon Zoysia because Zeon is supposed to be the most uh, shade tolerant of the warm season grasses that they have so looks really beautiful super fine blade uh, grass and so here goes the process uh, that I used uh, first of all you're going to need to know the measurements of the space obviously uh, to order the proper amount of sod so you'll just you know take your measurements uh, lengthwise and widthwise and multiply that out then you're going to want to add about 10% uh, because you're going, you're, there will be some waste uh, in the process. I actually ended up um, with my calculations of the space that I have plus the 10% somewhere around 700 square feet. A pallet of sod does around 500 square feet. If there's a local place you can get sod, you know, you can get a pallet and then, you know, go back and uh, get pieces uh, to make up the difference if you don't need a whole second pallet or even a whole first pallet. So, uh, I went ahead and had them deliver me two pallets and uh, I ended up giving uh, some of the pieces to a neighbor uh, after I was done. The first step in this process though was to till it. Um, I had, uh, as, a land as a long time landscaper, I've had some very large tillers in the past, but I currently have this little electric tiller uh, that I got off of Amazon and it absolutely worked fantastic for these two small spaces. If you had a large area or you had a lot of rocks or you had a lot of roots, it probably would not be adequate and you'd want to rent a tiller. But this little electric tiller really dug in uh, to the soil. It took me, I think I ended up going around about four times uh, with it over the course of four days. So just once a day, I tilled it. The first time it just cracked the top of the surface. And by the time, the fourth time I did it, the soil was basically liquid. Uh, it, it, did, it, did a great, it did a great job with it. Things got a lot of power. So I was impressed with it. But like I say, if you have a big job, you're one, you probably want something with some weight. Or if you have a very rocky space, this thing will just bounce on top of rocks. It doesn't have enough weight uh, to bite uh, on them. So I ended up tilling down to a depth of maybe five or six inches. Uh, I used, um, in between each tilling, I used a still tine rake and pulled out a few rocks uh, each time. Uh, it's not a rocky place, but it did have a few. And then I'd use a leaf rake. Uh, to take out the uh, grass and uh, other debris, things that were lighter uh, to rake out. And I just rake it back smooth. Next morning, I tilled it again. Just kept repeating that process until the day uh, that the uh, sod was delivered. Um, the uh, driver for uh, Super Sod uh, did me a huge favor and brought the bag of compost right over the front yard space. And I just cut the bottom out of the uh, compost bag and uh, dumped it right there where it was going. So that was fantastic. I spread that out in the front yard and then um, I brought half of it back to the uh, backyard space. I'm not using a lot of compost. This is not, um, in, in bed spaces, I'll put a pretty thick layer of compost for planting shrubs and trees and that kind of thing. But in your turf, you wouldn't want to put a whole lot of compost just because it could end up keeping the area kind of boggy, be hard to walk on, um, be hard to mow. It might rut pretty easy when, when it's wet and you're putting foot traffic on it that kind of thing. So uh, I just use a very small amount. I basically covered the ground with the compost. Then I lightly tilled that uh, back in and I'm really just using the compost to keep that soil from recompacting uh, and adding some organic material and obviously some food uh, for the grass at the same time. After that was done, I uh, again did my uh, raking uh, over it and then I actually took a, bo a long board and uh, there were a couple high spots in the uh, back that I wanted to smooth out. And I just used a two by four and pulled those uh, high spots uh, into some lower areas in the, uh, in the, in the backyard. So that was, that was super effective. Before you actually start laying sod, if the sod is going to abut any hard surfaces like a sidewalk or a driveway or anything like that, you'll wanna go through with a flat shovel 
and make sure it's a, the soil is about an inch lower along the driveways. I don't have any of those spaces. My lawn is actually out just right in the middle, um, you know, surrounded by just bed spaces. So I didn't have to worry about that. But the sod is about an inch thick. And so you want to make sure that uh, you've got, you know, about an inch of depth um, along any hard surfaces. That way it doesn't sit up above uh, sidewalks and driveways and that kind of thing. Then you get to the fun part of actually uh, laying out your sod. Uh, the, uh, the joints on the sod need to be staggered. So think about your uh, tiles in your bathroom or bricks on a driveway, uh, those, those types of jobs. You'll always see that the, um, that, that the joints are overlapping. And so you wanna do the same thing with your sod. You'll roll a piece out and then when you start your second row, just stagger the joint and pull them close together. Uh, I tend to be on the piece that's the side that's already been laid. It's better on my knees and I'll pull the other piece in as close as I possibly can without overlapping. It's kind of key. We don't want the side to overlap on it, the pieces to overlap one another at all because we want to make sure it all is able to sit down right on top of the ground. But we do need it as close together as possible. And then from there, it's just a matter of rolling them out. And uh, I'll, uh, about every other row, I'll let a piece go maybe three feet longer than the row just to uh, have that extra pieces as I cut it in later uh, to work with. Uh, once I have it all uh, laid out, uh, I'll go through and uh, cut in the edges and I just use a flat shovel. There's all kinds of ways to do this. You could paint a line on the ground uh, at that point and uh, so then you could follow a uh, painted line. You could put out a uh, uh, you could put out a water hose and so and, and just make the angle that you want and then come along and cut it out. I've been doing this long enough that I can kind of eye, you know, eyeball it and I just use a flat shovel and cut along it. Uh, you could use any, any, you could use a knife. Uh, you can use anything you want. The sod cuts pretty easily and just try to get a nice smooth edge, you know, and, and nice smooth curves. Uh, if you have rectangles, obviously that's much easier. And then uh, you want to get to, uh, what I do at that point is I went and rented a sod roller. I used to own one, but now I don't. And so I had to go rent one and you fill the sod roller with water and you run the sod roller over it a couple times just to make sure that all of the roots are in contact with the soil. And that, that's the reason we use the sod roller. So once your new sod is laid out, cut in and rolled, it's time to water. And I will put a sprinkler on a newly sodded area and I will just water and water and water till basically the ground kind of rejects uh, water. I, I kind of drown the space the first time. And then over the course of the next few days, I just kind of determine uh, whether I'm going to water it by pulling up the corner of a piece and just checking under it and seeing how wet it is. Most likely the main places that are going to dry out in your sod are going to be around the edges. Um, they're the most vulnerable and the most exposed to drying out. Also sometimes, uh, you know, on the, on the gaps between the pieces of sod, uh, you'll notice that it's a little bit drier. So sometimes just hand watering will work. Uh, when it's new, when it's put down, when it's newly put down, that area in the front yard gets so hot in the afternoon. There were a couple days as I was uh, getting this rooted in that I didn't actually need to water, but I felt the need to just kind of cool that space off a little bit. So I just ran the sprinkler for 10 or 15 minutes just to cool the turf off, uh, just knowing that it doesn't have any roots attached to the ground. Within three or four days, if you'll, you know, pulling up an edge piece, all of a sudden you'll notice that uh, it's, it's, you know, that it's starting to grab the ground. It doesn't take very long at all. And so, that heavy watering that we're doing in that first week, uh, week and a half, you can start to back off uh, pretty quickly and get to the point where you're just watering it heavily uh, about every third day or so, something like that uh, during, the, uh, during the summertime. And when you water it though, water it extremely well, but continue to monitor the edges. Uh, the edges, like I say, they're the most vulnerable to drying out. Uh, the, your mowing schedule, your fertilizing schedule, all of those kinds of things would be based on the type of turf uh, that you used. And so, um, you know, I'm not going to go into detail on that. Obviously, these warm season grasses get mowed lower than fescues and that kind of thing. So uh, check with the, uh, with the place that you buy the sod from or your local garden center, that kind of thing on your uh, local, your maintenance for in your local area for the type of turf that you purchased. So although this job is a little physically demanding, I hope you can see that the steps are not complicated and it's really super rewarding. So uh, go out and give it a try. Thanks for watching this video.